And welcome back to Devlog. In the last part, ledges, and in this part, rope. Now you may be asking, initially, why even add a dang old rope to this old game? Why? What's the, what's the point there? And the answer to that is there isn't one. I just wanted to code rope uh, movements in two-dimensional space because I thought it would be fun, and I have no actual plans for a level revolving around this mechanic, or really even involving this mechanic. This is a, a few weeks of work for no reason. This is going to be in three levels total, maybe? It was just a fun thing to make. Initially, I wanted to make more of a physics-based system for the ropes, as in actual calculated physics for the rope segmented movements. I then realized, and let me get real close to the microphone to really emphasize my point, that was a terrible idea. And not to be a video game elitist or anything, but my least desirable quality to have in a platforming game is a game that doesn't rely on physics having one section that for no reason relies on physics. Having to rely on in-game physics for one specific movement quality sucks. I'd rather have it calculated, organized, and controllable by the player. I mean, I get that my game is floaty and dumb, but I want it to be floaty, dumb, and calculated. So anyway, that's why I scrapped 90% of the work on this rope project and did it completely differently. Let us actually talk about how ropes move in this dang old system. It is deceptively easy. All we have is the base rotation for the rope, and I will talk about how I make it look good later. But I'll just talk about the regular ribbon. The regular rope rotation, either left or right based on the player's movements, and the rope's momentum. When the player is not on the rope, obviously the momentum is zero, nothing's acting on the rope, the rope doesn't do anything. Once the player hits on the rope, we will assign momentum based on where the player has hit onto the rope. So, the top of the rope, they're not going to be applying any momentum because they cannot act on force towards the rope because they're pushing the rope from its base point. At the bottom of the rope, they're applying their maximum momentum, so if you're running at a value of 12, this adds 12 momentum to the rope. The rope will then control and lerp its Z directional rotation based on momentum. So just for example, 20 momentum could equal 80 degrees. So at a value of 20 momentum on a rope, it will be rotated to 80 degrees in the Z axis at minus 20, minus 80, at zero, zero. And then we just organize player inputs to accommodate to what force you want to apply to the rope. And this can be fed into the rope's actual scripting for how it works, and the rope will move in accordance to this. So, for example, if the player is pressing right on the rope, they will be having a momentum of 1 being fed to the rope. This means the rope is going to try to move to the right at pressing left input, it's going to try to move to the left. At 0, there is no player influence on the rope, so we're just going to move into a still position. This is made way more complicated by momentum and build-up of rope momentum and build-up. For example, if you're on a funny swing and you go all the way to the right with your rope momentum and then very quickly all the way to the left, you're actually going to go further than original. You're going to be gaining momentum. This is not how physics actually works. You're going to be gaining momentum as you swing from one side of the rope to the other because you're kicking really hard with your legs and getting speed. This is basically if the player is set on a rope and they don't have any velocity already, they can build up velocity over time. How does this work? I'm glad you asked. If we're at one degree of the rope's momentum, this being 20 degrees for example, if we're at one side, we're going to build up a invisible value, which is the rope's saved momentum. This is the amount the rope is building their momentum that can be fed if their actual target momentum is negative the amount of the positive amount of the same momentum. Does that make any sense? Absolutely not. So if the player is moving towards the right, they will build up this value. Then as the player moves towards the left, this value, as well as the actual amount we want to travel to on our momentum, is going to be added to the player. So if the player's default movement value towards one section of the rope is 8, they're going to be moving 
8 degrees to the right, they're going to be building up their saved momentum, and then if they move to the left, their target is going to be 8 by default, but they're also going to be added their saved momentum that has been built up by being on one side. So instead of the target value being 8, it could be 16. This is all controlled by float values, so I can make the ropes more adaptable, as you will see later in the devlog. But this is basically how momentum is worked. This is increased by player input, as in the player is actually controlling their rope and having a lot more influence on the rope because they're using their input values to move in one direction or the other, but the player has no input value, this rope is instead of going to be trying to lurk to zero, but it's going to overshoot this amount based on the saved momentum. Then based on the save momentum, it's just going to go back and forth as this save momentum is reduced each time the rope is exceeding the zero amount on one axis and going back and forth and eventually resting. I'm just going to sum up that section really quick as I usually do when I have been rambling. Essentially we have our momentum that a rope is actually moving at, our target momentum what the rope should move to, and our save momentum and these all add together to make the rope have a wiggly back and forth motion. We will then have the actual speed the rope is built to, or the player's speed they build to when on the rope. This is complicated for a multitude of reasons, but mostly for the momentum and flow of the game. If you hold one direction on the rope, we're going to be moving towards that direction, we're going to exceed it by our same momentum, and then we're going to slightly slow down to our regular default momentum from one side of the rope at its extreme of an input without any saved values. The reason we don't have the rope just let back and forth to regardless of player input once momentum is slowed down is because that isn't fun for gameplay. So if you hold one angle on the rope, you can technically be tilted at an angle of a physics defying amount for an extended period of time just by holding an input. Again, this is just a design decision to make movement more fun, but the issue is that the player may have too much speed built up on this momentum because they aren't moving at any point, but the rope still has momentum. So when the player lets go of this rope, they'll be going way too fast for what they should be doing because they're just essentially staying still. All I do in this sense is if the player hasn't moved very much on the rope, as in the rope's momentum hasn't moved very much, their speed is actually going to be reduced back to zero because the player isn't having any influence on their momentum on the rope, they're just kind of hanging there limply as the rope is defying gravity. This means when the player now jumps from this rope position, they will have a much more organically slow jump rather than if they moved the peak point of this rope sway where they would have more of a speedier jump from the rope. If I'm being honest with you on this one, I don't think this value really means much. Um, I don't think very many players are actually going to be doing this on ropes. I think most players, if they are going to be on a rope, they're probably going to want to build the momentum back and forth but it just makes the, the visuals look nice. It also controls the animation. If the player has a lower speed, they're going to be kicking their legs less and that makes the movement a bit more dynamic looking, but realistically not a huge addition to the ropes movement mobility's moveset. Next we have jumping from the ropes. Aside from the animation, very simple. You just add the players to the player's movement as a regular jump would be based on the momentum velocity, so at moving at 12 we're, jump we're jumping 12 units to the right. The only complexity to this is there is a rope jump override. If the player is holding the opposite input of the rope's momentum, we will instead jump in the opposite direction at a fixed value. This is just if you are having the rope all the way to the right and you're wanting to move left, you can still jump off it and not maintain the rope's momentum and go the opposite direction. It is very simple, we just have a fixed momentum that is assigned to the player in specific variables, but other than that, the rope jump is the exact same as every other jump function because it's just another jump function. We just feed in a different logic information class. Next we have the animations. It's talking about animation time. Let's all boot up Blender, let's see what's going on. We have a few different animations for ropes. We have our rope jump that I just mentioned. This is basically the illusion of the player jumping from the rope. They are holding onto the rope, they are letting go of the rope, they're jumping off it. Very simple. The rope hang is a nice little idle pose with the player wobbling back and forth while on the rope. I like this animation. I like this a whole lot. I always am a big fan of idle animations that are just a backwards and forth wiggle. They're very 
fun. Um, we have the rope hanging forward. This is the player at their max speed moving. So this is them pulling on the rope to go forward. They're kicking their legs to add momentum. Same as the other animation, isn't there's some nice little squish as the character kicks their legs back and forth, which I think looks nice. And the animation overall is just very fun looking. Finally, we have the rope poses. These are just the player leaning back and forth as they go with the rope's momentum. Very, very simple. Um, the, the player just leans backward or forwards with the momentum based on if they have any speed. So if the player is momentum forwards, they're going to have the forward pose if they don't have any speed. So this would be lurped into as the player loses speed on the rope. Very, very, very simple. We also have when the player is being set on the rope. This is also a very simple animation. The player just goes from the air pose, they grab the rope, they lean forward with momentum a little bit, and then they wiggle back to whatever rope pose they are supposed to be on. They are all animations that particularly rely on the blending between the rope's momentum and the player's movement, so these have a lot of blending between these animations, but I think overall they look very nice for rope movement. Finally, we have the rope segmentation and how the rope actually plays out in the game to make it look like a little rope. This was the easiest part of making the rope physics, and I'm not being, um, I'm not being sarcastic with that one. I know it's very difficult to tell my voice, but I'm being sincere. Easy peasy, absolutely simple to set up. Here's how I did it. All I do is I have a list of segments this rope will have. For example, three segments. I will then calculate where these segments should be on the rope. So the first segment would be near the top, the second segment in the middle, the third segment between the middle and the bottom of the rope. The top and the bottom of the rope are not counted as segments because these are all in fixed positions based on the rotation of the rope. We will then create an object class. We will then create a value for each of these ropes angle. These are just set at zero, so this is a zero position. And all these do is they will lerp their angle to whatever the current angle of the rope is on the z-axis. So for example, if the angle on the z-axis is 75, these rope positions will each lerp to 75 at different degrees. The ropes near the center of the rope are going to lerp at a slower degree, and the ropes near the top and the bottom are going to lerp at a faster degree. The reason for this is that I just wiggled some ropes and this value of movement where the middle of the rope moves slower than the end and the base of the rope just seemed the most natural. I don't know enough about physics to, to program a rope realistically. This is just the easiest method that made it look realistic to me. After I have these values, I assign where the rope should be in world space. So I use these angles to calculate from the base base of this angle where this point of the rope would be. So at 45 degrees, we would have the base tilted 45 degrees downwards for whatever position this rope segment would be on the rope. So if this is the second segment of a three segmented rope, this would be halfway down the rope. And then I will make a vector two in this position. These are all then fed to a line renderer, which is how this system works. I probably should have mentioned that it's a line renderer up front, so it was easier to and then this line renderer just renders each frame where the rope is based on these values that are fed to it. Very, very, very simple. Super easy. Finally, we have the adaptability of this script. This script has a few different values, but basically I can just change a couple of these and the ropes will act in completely different ways. I can change the weight value of these ropes so the ropes are heavier. This means the rope is going to swing back to zero at a faster rate and we're going to be able to build momentum less because the rope is heavier and we have less influence on it. I can make it so the rope has more swing momentum so the rope has a lot more swing as you go back and forth. Realistically, very, very simple to change values in this because they're just public float values, but the reason I made this rope is just because I could maybe add a rope in a different level, and this rope would be a chain, and this chain is heavier than the rope, and therefore works differently, ever so slightly. Basically just to add variety to ropes when I add them in-game. So, the third rope, in total, of the three ropes in-game, will be slightly different than the original ropes, and that will make the game dynamic and fun, I think. And that is it about this for devlog. I had a lot of fun making this system. Realistically, it was quite tricky to have the rope swinging back and forth and having its momentum, but 
Surprisingly, visually was the easiest part of making this rope movement. As I have said, I have no actual plans to implement any levels based around rope movement. It's mostly just a thing that I can throw in a level if I feel like maybe some movement or collision would be more engaging for the player if there was a rope there to swing on, or maybe just for fun. But this system was very fun to make. I like making little systems for my game just to add variety for player movements. The next devlog will be about underwater levels, swimming mechanics, and underwater movements. So you can just skip that one, I guess. <laughs>